open now. And we are live. We are live, live, live. So come on in, everyone. Come on in. We are live tonight. We have two guests tonight. There we go. We just went live on the Shrine Facebook page. And then we'll be going live on our other sites. Just want to say thank you guys for jumping in at this very late hour. I appreciate it. Why are y'all both so quiet? I knew neither of y'all are quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I know that for a fact. <laughs> I'm letting you warm up. I'm letting you warm it up, Chris. I'm warming it up. I'm about to, yep. Yeah. Letting you warm, warm it up. Warm it up, King. <laughs> Isn't that how that goes? Kinda. But, okay. <laughs> it's okay to make it. It's okay to make up your own lyrics. Did I mess? Wait, it's warming up, Chris. What? Which? What is it? Chris Cross. You don't remember Chris Cross? <laughs> <laughs> yes, my bad. Yeah, right. I go. served him at the sport at um at the at the Shark Bar in Atlanta back in the day. Yeah, one of those one of those young men just died not not recently. Yeah. Uh, last year, year before, something like that. Really? That means they're both gone. Well. I mean, if I was the other one, I'm still here. I would disagree, but yeah, as a group, they're not together. Wait, one there's only not. two of them. Right? Yeah, I think it was like the brown skin one. I think he had, I forgot what ailment he suffered from. Maybe lupus or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember having them. They were nice, and I got a good tip. And I forget which nice. one it was, but he asked for um, a lighter, and I just gave it to him, and he like lit up something a cigar or something and you're not i'm you're sure not. it wasn't a cigar but okay <laughs> listen i'm gonna just say that and uh, it smoking was not illegal i mean smoking was not allowed but i just forgot and he right. was so nice and whatever so anyway so so that's kind of sad to hear yeah it is it's very sad because they were both but, young you know, death is part of life and they death, weren't death young is part of life. very true it definitely is is there any way that you guys can speak up a little louder? Because I'm on. Um... Uh, yeah. How's that? It, my external mic is. Is that any better? Okay. Yes. Okay, can cool. you hear me? I can hear you. Yes. Okay. okay. So welcome everyone. Welcome, welcome. Come on in. Come on in. We really appreciate everybody who shows up uh, to Tuesday Talk. And so today we are going to be talking about. We're really going to kind of have a little bit of a discussion about this baby formula shortage and what we think the cause might be and the importance of a baby formula, but also, you know, our ancestral ways of nourishing our own children, nourishing our infants and toddlers and babies and, and our families and how it is that we can address this issue um, that we have, you know, we hear about the supply chain shortage. Is that true or not? People are saying that the baby formula is held up at the border and they're giving it to, to people who are migrants who are trying to come to the country. And just, just all of those things incite such a level of fear and confusion and, then, and at some level misunderstandings or misinformation rather. And so tonight we're just going to address some of that a little bit but also come uh, come away with some solutions that are practical and that's also something that's rooted in our African ancestry, okay? So I thought that that would be a really pertinent um, topic considering that all of this is going on um, right now. For those of you who are followers or uh, regular guests here on Tuesday Talk, then these two people are not new to you. I had uh, Queen Tanziwe on earlier in the season, and I more recently had Robert Gilchrist on earlier in the season. And you guys loved both of them so much. So I knew bringing them both back on would be something that would be very powerful. I know both of them personally very well, and they, they really, truly live, really, truly live and know the stuff that they talk about. So first, I'm going to introduce Queen Tanziwe. She is a member of the Shrine of Ma'at. She is a part of Rock House Shen. And Tandiwe leads a very plant-based, holistic life. She's raised her children 
um, with holistic foods and making their own uh, her own foods before this was something you know that that people that people did. So um, Tandiwe, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, your your background, to catch people up with who you are. And then from the background part, how you transitioned into or how you got into this holistic life where you said, you know what, I ain't about to do that. I'm not feeding my kids that. I'm not putting that in my mouth. Uh-uh. Can you start us from the beginning and kind of work us up to here? So um, just in relation to, in, in general, I'm a spiritual uh, life coach, refer to myself as a Jegna for um, spiritual Black women. Um, take them through rites of passage processes, healing traumas in the past. Uh, in relation to what we're speaking about tonight, one of the first um, reasons why was I sat down with this beautiful book written specifically for us Black women, by us, for us, um, right before I gave birth to my first child. Um, I never really considered breastfeeding. My mother did not breastfeed. Uh, I was told that it was gross and that's not something anybody should do, um, which is just funny to me now. Um, and I just remember reading about the benefits and I, this conviction just came over me and it was like, I must do this. I had, I, and I knew I had to have a conviction about it because at the time my son now is, um, about to be 16. So this was several years ago. Um, and I knew I needed a conviction about it because I was going to battle with the people in my family who actually were more pro formula. Um, and yeah, just kind of continued from there. And I, then once I exclusively breastfed for the six months, um, I gradually started to introduce certain foods um, singularly at first. It just was natural to me to slide straight from the breastfeeding into making my own food. I'm like, it's food in the refrigerator. It can be pureed. You mix it with what already is coming from my body that he was already used to um, ingesting. It was just a natural flow. And then even in my work, when you're talking about a holistic lifestyle, I started to learn from my own Jegnas like Queen Afua um, because I realized there was something missing. I could get at your mind, we could work on your spirituality, but there were these blocks that kept coming up. Um, and I started to really feel as well as my own experience that some of this stuff was coming from what was physically happening in the body. What, what the sugars and, and dairy and um, processed foods and fast foods and how are these things affecting your mind? How are these things really creating blocks to access to even your spirituality, your spiritual connection? People wanted to feel a very uh, connected to the most high and they kept feeling like they were quote unquote falling off the path when that wasn't happening but all those chemicals and things in your system are actually blocking your access to this higher uh, understanding of yourself and connection to spirit and nature and all these different things um, so I started learning about um, uh, uh, detoxing and fasting and and that really was that missing piece in being able to support and help the sisters that were coming through um, my programs and working with me one-on-one -on -one. Hope that okay, cool. <laughs> so let me ask you a question. When, when, because this is so, I don't have any children, so I've, I've never breastfed, but I've heard that it is not always easy, True. that sometimes the baby does not latch on, that mm -hmm. it's painful, mm -hmm. and then women just stop. Yeah. And I've always wondered, well, what did women do before there was formula? Like the women just kind of had to figure it out and, and make it work. I mean, and I know from my friends who did breastfeed, my close friends breastfed all their all their children until they stopped wanting the breast, stopped mm -hmm. wanting the breast milk mm -hmm. and and just kind of work through the painful mm -hmm. part so that they could breastfeed their children. What was your experience with, with breastfeeding in terms of if it was something that was painful or at any point did you ever feel discouraged? Absolutely. Many tearful days and nights. <laughs> um, with my first son, what I did, I had no one in my family supported breastfeeding. Um, so it felt uphill anyway. And I remember meeting a stranger that I saw breastfeeding and literally saying, if you don't mind, can you tell me what your experience is? Because I was only hearing about pain and struggle. And so she started to explain to me this beautiful, um, almost euphoric kind of other extreme. She said there were difficulties, but this, this kind of beautiful way of bonding and the release of oxytocin and, you know, and I was just like into it, you know, and it was kind of a, um, a gift and a blessing that I gave myself and being willing to ask that question and listen to all these different sides. But I, um, like I said before, there has to be a conviction because if there isn't, you will quit. Um, mm. With my first son, um, 
they did not give him to me right away. Um, I had some complications in the process, so I didn't see him for 24 hours. That is enough to dry your milk supply up. Mm. So my milk was not coming in. And so when you talk about crying, because I was really like, no, and I, I didn't even buy formula. Like, I have to do this. And um, they were d dumping formula into his system in the nursery because I was going through this heavy process of recovery. So I didn't even have them the whole time. I remember being delirious in the hospital, you know, uh, coming in and out of awareness. And this wonderful nurse said, you need your baby. Cause I was going nuts. Like I wouldn't rest nothing. Um, but by the time they brought them to me, I didn't have access to the milk. So I kept trying to latch them on. It wasn't necessarily working. I want to say I didn't produce milk for about five days. Oh, wow. But I refused to give him formula. I remember my best friend knowing how convicted I was. We bought formula, but then she hid it from me. <laughs> she says, I think he'll be OK. And we went to the hospital, found a lactation consultant there who was really supportive of breastfeeding, which was really helpful. And I remember it was so blissful. I sat there. She was like, do this thing. And she's twisting my boob all up in all kinds of ways. I didn't care. I didn't care about what it felt like or anything because I wanted my son to get this from me. And I remember he was nursing, but in the beginning, you don't really even know, like, what's happening? Is this actually working? And his eyes rolled up in his head. And I was like, what's wrong? Because first kid, you're like, what, what's wrong with him? What's he turning into? She said, he's full. I'm about to go to sleep. <laughs> right. She said, he's full. Like, he's in bliss right now. This is like the best moment of his uh, five-day-old life. But he did go those five days, you know, and, and some people might argue with me and bash me or whatever for not just succumbing and giving him the formula. But it was just this, like I said, that conviction and that knowing and that trusting in yourself as, as a human being, as a divine being, as a mother in those instincts beyond everything, because you are kind of weighing science and information from what your 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 mother sense is telling you is the best thing and and i'm so glad that i did with my second son every time he latched on it was painful it was like oh, somebody wow. took my nipple and just like literally i would know he latched on because i go oh, okay and i still nursed him for an entire year so when he was suckling it felt like a severe nipple twist when he first i that's how i knew he latched it was like Ugh. and then he would latch and then it would be like, whoo. But if he popped off because he got curious about something, because they do that six, seven, eight months, and now he's curious about everything going on around, I'm like, oh, because when he gets back on, I'm going to feel that same thing. <laughs> for whatever reason, that's how the letdown happened for him. And I just, I dealt with it. it for me, it was worth it for him to get. I had little fat, roly poly babies um, or nothing but breast milk for the next month. With my third son, um, again, it was it was a trauma. He was in the ICU. I was stuck in the hospital for six days. I had issues with my heart. So again, I didn't get him with the regularity that I needed for the milk to come in. Um, and I started to take herbs, herbs like fenugreek. They have wonderful formulas out now. Um, fenugreek makes you smell like pancakes and maple syrup. Um, I'm familiar. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I've used, and, I'm um, familiar with fenugreek. Yeah. I've used it. Yeah, it's, it's definitely great for other things, but it, it helped me. Um, and then I found like other mother's formulas and things like that. It doesn't always work. Um, some people I know have taken the same exact formula that helped me produce milk. And um, for them, they were allergic. Their skin broke out. So it's, it's I, I definitely don't want to come down hard on someone who really just can't um, do it or it's just way too much of a struggle. But I also mm -hmm. really, really want to say that before you embark on it, you want to have a conviction about it because it's not this just smooth. The baby doesn't know how to latch on right away. You don't know how, it's not this thing where you just look down like puppies and they just know how to get on the nipple right and everything just works out perfect. It's different holes. Babies have different um, things with their palates and how their tongue sits in their mouth and might make them actually push it out or reject. Women have inverted nipples. and So it's all kinds of variables that can come up that can make it difficult. Um, certainly there could have come a time where I would have just, you know, been like, all right, you know, I, I did the best that I could and it wasn't able to happen for me. In my case, I, I pushed through. I remember my husband calling three different nurses because I just sat in the room and I cried and I said, I have to give my third mm -hmm. son the same thing I gave my first two sons and I'm not sure what to do. And, you know, and then he found these herbs and he talked to these different nurses that he knew that were married to like friends that he had. Um, and could put them on the phone with me because he knew that I had this, you know, I was getting milk with him, but it wasn't enough. Um, right. So, but we figured it out. I took the herbs and, um, and I was able to do it. Uh, 
but it was not smooth sailing. So I never want anybody to go into it. It might be, some people it is, but it's not guaranteed that it will be. You know, I have a friend and she has two, she has two kids. Her first daughter, she has a, a daughter and a son. Her, with her first child, nursing was a breeze for her. Mm -hmm. She nursed and she would just pop her on, boom. Baby would nurse, no problem. Pop her on the other one, no problem. Mm -hmm. Get up in the middle of the night and nurse because she was producing so much milk. And right. she would have, what are those things called? What are, Pumps? Yeah, yeah. So she's got <laughs> the pumps on the boobs and she's like, sigh, I get up at four in the morning and I'm sitting here with my boobs out with the pumps on my boobs. And so she had plenty of milk. And um, and then at one point it kind of stopped and she took some mother's something. It's a it's mother's, a, 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 a mother's a, milk, mother's something, mother's love. Something. Yeah, yeah, I know. You're talking and about though. and the, and the milk came back and it just wasn't a problem for her. And then with her son, <laughs> he's rolling around, he's on the boob, he's looking up, da 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 da. da. And so like with her first daughter, with well, her first child, it was the piece, it was easy peasy because she just has an easy peasy personality now. She's fourteen or fifteen. Mm -hmm. She's been like she's been a mild mannered girl the whole time. I knew her from birth. Yeah. So yeah, it definitely can be um, different uh, situations with with breastfeeding just from from what I've heard. Yeah. Um, yeah, and 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 I think that there is um, this resurgence in, in some in some level of of bringing breast uh, breastfeeding back. Yeah. So I, I you know I, I don't put anybody down for making choices and decisions that that work best for for their own family because you don't, you don't know the inner workings you know of what's going on. Yeah. So so um, so Robert, before we begin with you asking you some of these questions. Can you give us a little bit of background on what got you started with growing, um, growing plants, growing food inside? And I know that our, our faithful uh, watchers of, of Tuesday Talk remembers Robert, because I got a lot of inquiries about how to get, get back in touch with him. So Robert, how did you get started with um, Let's Grow Inside and basically actually growing inside before you started your business? I thought you were gonna, well, thanks for having me on again. I thought you were going to ask me about my experience with breastfeeding. I am. I am. But I, I'm... I do have a story about that, though. I, I mean, know you do. <laughs> yeah. When I was married, um, my ex-wife, now now ex-wife at the time, she she had those problems with breastfeeding. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, when you mentioned just conviction, that, that was probably I mean, it was it was rough. And it got to a point where I'm like, look, this baby gonna die. My baby gonna die. We gotta feed her. And then we switched over to formula, but it was it was just painful. I remember her wanting to, but she quit after a while. It was just too painful. I know there's some salves you gotta rub on your nipples because mm -hmm. my daughter was going at it, you know, and I I'm glad I don't have to experience that. So let's go inside. Um, yeah, so just the whole concept of growing i have a current currently i have a curriculum where we teach people how to grow cannabis in the privacy of their home uh we're not exclusive to cannabis but um i'm sitting in the studio i just got finished doing a course with my students so it was perfect timing when you asked me to get on it was like i'm already doing a live show myself so we just awesome. got finished uh yeah i started off building grow rooms uh, I would convert your basement, your your bedroom, your your a spare bedroom, a basement, a garage, attic, and I would convert it into uh, an indoor garden. Um, now, I've since COVID, people didn't want me coming in their homes because of the pandemic, and I didn't want to be in their home <laughs> for the same reason. So, I uh, retrofitted the business into what you see now, where we drop ship all this equipment that you see behind you in your house and then you use uh these oculus quest goggles we send those to you you put them on and i'm like a hologram standing in front of you for 16 weeks teaching you how to grow step by step so i started off with teaching people how to grow vegetables uh you know i was when i was a kid that i was the gardener i was the one that my mom handed me the shovel and turned the dirt over and uh, we put fish heads in it, you know, before you plant. And so I'm kind of good with a green thumb. I know what I'm doing. 
um, now because cannabis, you know, is so much more lucrative than just regular food. Obviously, I, I have my course in cannabis and we're about to, I just, uh, in the midst of finalizing an agreement where we're going to have a second course where we're teaching people how to do microdosing with psilocybin with magic mushrooms. So um, I'm excited about that. But uh, gardening in general, just the whole teaching people, the whole concept of putting what is in your body, knowing what you're putting into your body. And I'm hoping that's what we're going to talk about, the sustainability of growing in home, uh, because the same that you have behind here with the lights and all the equipment that you see, you could easily grow and talk about the fruits and the vegetables that you eat so that you know what you're putting in your body. You can eat to live versus living to eat, which what most of us do. Uh, I used to always tell people if it comes in the form of a commercial don't or advertisement, eat don't eat it, right? Period. But we have to understand when we talk about food shortage, when we talk about a uh, lack of breast milk, which is, you know, what's going on now, but tomorrow it might be romaine lettuce. It might be, you know, now we're That's right. salmonella and all this other stuff that, you know, we don't know what we're putting into our body. Some of it may be by natural, some of it may be by design, putting it in the black communities, which we know happens, right? That's so right. we have to learn how to offset that and grow our own food and our own nutrition. So you don't have to stand in line uh, at Whole Foods if you grow it in spaces like I have behind me. So that was kind of my transition. Um, I used to be in politics. I used to, so one of the easiest switches was getting out of that nine to five, that plantation style working environment um, and learning how to just be an entrepreneur for myself. So mm -hmm. you know, that's where the lucr lucrativity of this came from. But, you know, knowing what you're putting in your body is just equally important. So that's true. That absolutely true. Be yep. Before I, I, I dive into that, I, I did want to ask you as as the husband to, you know, your wife at the time who was struggling with breastfeeding, was there anything that the you as her as her husband and her partner could, you know, could do to to help? I guess I'm asking us for specific specifics from you on a, a general broader question of what is the role of the husband or the man and helping the woman be able to lactate if that's possible. You know, I, I don't know what the role of the husband can be in that sense, in terms of mm -hmm. a supporter. Um, that's a bond between child and mother mm -hmm. um, that has to be established that, you know, the father has very little control other than supporting his mate, which he should be doing anyway throughout the right. process. I mean, watching a woman's body transform it was actually kind of at times it was kind of freaky and scary. <laughs> you know, <I> <laughs> right. Like, woman possessed. She went from, you know, <laughs> now, but that's what a, you know, a baby's coming out of you. Right. I mean, for those women, for women or for people that think that, I don't know where that came from, that women aren't strong. <laughs> they obviously have never been around anybody that had a baby. Right. <laughs> right. And watch what happened. I mean, a whole human came out of, your legs that's some wild <laughs> right? the whole physical human right. came out so yeah that's traumatic for me i mean i guess you could look at it like oh man it's such a blessing but yeah i was there during delivery and watching that and then right after uh because my child stopped breathing temporarily hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'm and my my wife at the time was hemorrhaging, so I'm like, what do I oh, do? God. Do I go with the baby? Do I go with the, yeah. you know? So there's those are uh, some traumatic stories. I'm sure, everybody is not like that, but it's definitely a right. process. That's, it's a life changing process. So I don't know my input in terms of the breastfeeding. Yeah, it's it's for a man. Just be supportive. I right. mean, mm -hmm. be there and I don't know, rub salve on her nipples, <laughs> whatever you have to do to help. Because it is a joint effort. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard that, that support. That support. If I could just chime in what you're saying. Oh, is so mm -hmm. that support is everything. The most important thing that my husband did for me was keep me from stressing out. Because as far as the milk production process, your body doing what you know you want it to do as far as breastfeeding, if that's the, the way you want, really any of the parts of having children and having, especially as a new mother, um, keeping that stress level down 
because that stress level that creates that tension in the body, it shuts down a lot of mm -hmm. those natural things that want to flow through. So if she's That's like right. spazzing or she feels alone in the process. When I tell you the best thing was when I was sitting there crying and my husband walked in with a phone, like, I don't know what to do. There's a nurse practitioner on the phone. She supports breastfeeding. I called my friend and I knew that was, my he did what he knew to yeah. do right. to help allay the stress. And it was like, he, he was a superhero to me. He was just the what? God, the king that he is, because he because I was able to exhale and know I could straight lean physically on him and <laughs> and be a mess. And yeah. he was right there. He's going to roll with me regardless of how it went. So, yeah, what, one of your listeners uh, uh, made a comment like the father building and joining a bond. I did prior to my child being born. I mean, mm -hmm. I would I would put headphones on her stomach and play miles davis which i don't know if that helped because she never went to sleep but you know talking to my child and so my child knew me when she came out of the womb mm -hmm. um she knew who i was but i still think that that's separate from the bond of the mother you know that she has with uh but when we started switching the formula i was feeding her more of the time anyway so i was you know i mean the bond gets built if there's love involved the bond's going to be there regardless yeah. I think. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Robert is definitely a an involved father. I raised hair. my daughter. I was a single parent. I raised my because we got divorced and I had full custody of my daughter. So I yeah, I learned how to do my daughter's hair. She has really long, thick hair. I learned how to do her hair by practicing on her Barbie dolls, but I mastered that. <laughs> awesome. I would yes. take two strains, and there was like the third strain. I didn't know what to do with it. So I was putting it in my mouth. And then that's how I learned how to break. <laughs> so I made I the mistake. That. She was like four or five, and that's when I made the mistake of taking her to the beauty salon. That was the worst mistake I ever could have made because then they like straightened it, oh. you know, the hot comb or whatever. And then now she's got this hair flowing. And after that, she didn't want daddy touching her hair. Because all I could do oh. is like little twisty braids, but I was good with it. I was good. He was. I've seen pictures. He's definitely. Yeah. He was definitely good with with the ponytails no and doubt. and and slicking it down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so I do have some um, herbs that are good for um, milk production and milk letdown. And I, my the breast milk, um, the breast milk, the tea that my friend used to help her production was milk thistle. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember her drinking that tea and just, she was like, sigh, oh my God, I got all this breast milk now. And I think after that, this was 14 years ago, so it might be out of order, but I, I remember after that, she was like up at four in the morning pumping or she would leak anyway. So <laughs> Robert, are you familiar with any of these herbs and how to grow them? This is a list of herbs that are good for milk letdown. Some of these I'm familiar with, and I've heard this for about milk letdown. Some of these I've personally used for other reasons. Blessed thistle, fenugreek, fennel, stinging nettle, alfalfa, goat's rue, milk thistle, brewer's yeast, ginger, and garlic. Now, I've personally used fenugreek, fennel, stinging nettle, ginger, and garlic. And when you when you get a good source and you do your research, you know, you, you deep dive at like three in the morning, you dig in and dig in and dig in. OK, you have trusted people who write books and you read them and all of those things. This is a really good list. And getting the right source, these these herbs do what they say they're supposed to do when you have a really good source of an herb. Robert, are you familiar with growing any any of those herbs or or the ginger or garlic? The only one I've grown is garlic, but I will. I'm familiar with a lot of them. Uh, a lot of those um, milk thistle, dandelion is another good one. Uh, yeah. They help with your kidney and liver, right? So processing that that having your liver and your kidneys processing at optimum capacity undoubtedly is going to be good for any kind of milk production. Um, but I will say, like, for example, like behind me, um, with this grow tent that, that we use to grow cannabis, we send that to our clients. But the one thing that your, your listeners need to keep in mind is all I'm doing back here is controlling Mother Nature, right? I have to control the heat. I have to control the humidity. 
I have to control the light intensity and the airflow, the same thing you would have outside. Once you master those, then the only other thing you have to really master is the nutrients that you're feeding and you can grow anything. I mean, that's, that's the art. That's the art that we have to get back into. That's right. How to grow, how to put something in the ground. I had mentioned <clears throat> when I was a kid, we would grow tomatoes and cucumbers and broccoli and onions, uh, whatever my mom wanted to put it, especially the collard greens. You had to take especially care of the collard greens because we had green leafy vegetables every day for dinner of some sort. But a lot of it came from our garden. Right. So when we would plant plants or seedlings. I always always wonder why my dad would come home and he my dad's from Tennessee. Y'all, my mom's from Kentucky, so they southern folk, right? And they had all these like old school tricks, like putting a fish head. They dig a hole, drop the seed down in it, and but before they drop the seed, they put a fish head or fish guts. And I used to be like, why the heck are we doing that? But as I got older and I learned that's where the source of nitrogen comes for your plants. So your plants need nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus, the same thing, by the way, your human body needs, right? So I found that the same thing we're feeding the plants, we should be feeding ourselves, calcium, magnesium, phosphorus, so nitrogen. So all those, we need to find food sources. Like black men, you should be growing beets. Beets is the best thing that you can have for prostate health, for blood pressure, and they're easy to grow. Uh, so we should be putting those in our garden. If you don't have space outside, get one of these and start learning how to grow. Definitely, definitely. Tandiwe, um, mm -hmm. to to follow up kind of what Ro what Robert was saying, you know, he grew up with the garden in the back and, and eating it, you know, for dinner. What you, you had mentioned before, at least to me, what food did you make um, your baby? So you went from mm -hmm. breastfeeding and yeah. how long did you breastfeed? And then, then you made the baby's food. So can you take us from the time you were breastfeeding when you stopped and then when you started making food for your babies? So I continued to breastfeed um, even after I started to feed them. So I did exclusive breastfeeding for six months. And then around the six month mark uh, is when you start introducing single ingredient type foods. Um, so you can start with something like brown rice, uh, you don't need to buy the powder stuff that they sell in the stores. If you don't want to, you can certainly um, soak it. You always want to soak anything like that first, but you soak it, you get all those, the was it the phytic acid and the starches and all that stuff off of it. You somewhat overcook it and then you puree it usually with the breast milk because it helps the baby um, be familiar with the taste of, of what they basically been drinking for six months. But I, you start with that, what they call stage one. So it's just single and you making things like blue, being fun things, things you like blueberries and mangoes and broccoli and spinach, and you just pureeing it and you're mixing it with your breast milk. Um, so that's a gradual thing that you do somewhere between six months and depends on the child you're paying attention to how much the child is grinding your baby starts mm -hmm. reaching and putting their hands in your plate <laughs> and so they start being ready for more and more things i definitely made it more complicated than it needed to be with my first child by the time i got to the third one um and he was around nine months old uh pretty much whatever we ate he was eating so if i had some curry some chickpea curry with some brown rice and some carrots I just, before I put like any kind of salt or anything like that, but curry, um, cardamom, uh, cilantro, uh, cumin, babies can eat that stuff after a while. But you, that's, that's around the nine month mark where you want to start easing in the same type of spices that's a part of the palate of your household. You can work mm -hmm. those herbs and spices in with, um, with the babies eat. And you just, you want a good blender, a good food processor. Um, you add liquid to break it down um, around nine months when they start, those teeth start budding, those, um, the gums get harder because those teeth are starting to try to come in. They're actually, even with the gums, able to grind things up more. Um, so now at six months, you were, you know, pureeing it to smooth. Now you're like leaving little bits and things in there. Nothing that they can cho choke on, but just where you're introducing texture, you're seeing what their mm, idea, all that stuff they do with their tongue and start pushing things out. You see, right. you know, how much are they pushing it out? How much are they able to keep it in? Um, so you're really keeping a close watch. But the main reason why we start with single ingredients is we don't know what allergies the baby might have. 
I would never feed a baby anything that you're allergic to, you're, the father's mm -hmm. allergic to, people in your family are known to be allergic to. If, you know, um, and then just known uh, allergens, uh, peanuts and soy and eggs and those types of things you want to kind of keep as the last things you introduce, if you introduce them at all um, into the child's diet, you want to start with simple things that rarely are people allergic to, like avocado is great um, to start babies with, um, mango or bananas, where you're just cooking them if you need to, things like banana and avocado, you just let them be really ripe and you mash them up with a fork. Um, that's basically what we did. And like I said, it doesn't need to be complicated. The other thing that I did that I loved um, that worked really, really well is after you puree, you don't necessarily have to make it every single night. Um, you use ice cube trays and each of the ice cubes is about, yeah, an, ounce, okay. about an ounce of food. Um, once those cubes of food are, you know, formulated, you can hold them in a, a freezer safe container. Um, and then when you are ready to thaw it, you put it in a refrigerator container um, that morning. So if I knew I was going to feed my baby three different things, there would be three different containers that would sit and thaw either overnight or thaw from that morning to when I thought I was going to feed the baby that food so that you don't have to go through, please don't put food in microwaves um, mm. or even mm -hmm. older, you know, um, um, uh, uh, stick the cube like directly in the pan. And so now that fresh food that you made is now getting um, overcooked or, or um, just kind of shocked by all that heat. Um, so w once you start with that kind of soft, I would put, um, I would heat up a little bit of breast milk and a little bit of water, mix that in. That heats the food up. The baby doesn't need the food hot like your food is hot. Um, room temperature food is excellent. So these are all like little things that you learn um, as you do it. Yeah. And I, I could add in a little bit, uh, chime in a little bit about pureeing. I know that one of the beneficial parts of the plant is in the, the stem. Mm -hmm. oh, there's a lot of nutrients and a lot of people I know, for example, I love like chard and collard greens and kale and all that. And so I eat that a lot, right? Because of the vitamin C and the benefit. And somebody mentioned, uh, one of your listeners, chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is uh, good for aiding the, for the liver, for a healthy mm -hmm. liver. Uh, it helps remove toxins. Uh, but just like anything, you want to know your dosages and do some research. Know how much you know your body weighs, know all those percentages because that comes into play. No different than it does when we're feeding this plant, right? If I feed mm -hmm. it too much of anything, that plant's not going to uh, grow optimally. So the same thing with human body. I mean, we don't want to overdo anything. What we want is a healthy balance of all the nutrients and vitamins and minerals, right? And we need to have a healthy balance. Uh, so pureeing, if you were pureeing, puree the stem, puree everything. I mean, mm -hmm. for those listeners out there, men that have prostate issues, Take a whole lemon, a whole lemon, the, the skin and everything, and puree that and drink it if you can get it down. Keep it down. But uh, you do that for a, a couple of weeks and you'll, you don't need that little blue pill. Same thing with beets. <laughs> it's just, you know, just because we have to know what uh, we have to know what we can put in our body to know what it's doing. Right. That's and right. And then once That's you right. figure out what your body needs, grow it grow it and eat it and consume it being the benefit of growing at home is I don't have to worry about pesticides. I don't have to worry about putting things on for the predatory insects and all that. They spray pesticides on it. And then ultimately you're eating that or your baby's eating that. So right, right. As natural as possible and as fresh as possible and consume it that way. You're going to be so much better. Your body's going to thank you. It's going to thank you. So, you know, I just I just want to jump in as someone who learns from my guests on Tuesday Talk, which is one of the reasons why I started Tuesday Talk and why I pick the people that I pick. We have two people who have that I know personally who have monetized the lifestyle that they've been living since before it was like cool and woke to do it. <laughs> So these people, these two guests that I have actually live this life. I was and like, they look what are you talk about, I want to meet that person. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about you. <laughs> <laughs> and so, I mean, so do these people look stressed? Are, are they, are they worried? Are, are they panicked? No. Why? Right. First of all, Robert got all his food in the bag. 
So he gonna <laughs> eat. That's what you know what I'm saying. And and Tandiwe got a lot going on. She grows stuff. She makes food. She she's on top of her game as well. And so I I I specifically wanted these two on tonight to let everybody know that just because we've been we turn on the TV and everything is panic, 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 scarcity, 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 limit, limit, limit. You know, it doesn't mean that you have to panic about that. It doesn't right. mean that that is real. It doesn't mean that that is your problem. Remember when toilet paper was a big deal? Mm -hmm. Who has enough toilet paper now? Toilet paper, toilet paper, it's all you heard forever. It was ridiculous. So yeah. my point is, yeah. If the grocery stores r r run out of whatever, you know who ain't worried? I'm not worried because I grow. Tanziwe is not worried. Robert, for sure, ain't worried. Matter of fact, that might boost his business. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, we, we, I, I brought them on here so that you can have options. You, you have choices. You have sources of people that can give you information so that you can make, set your lifestyle up so that you are outside of depending upon somebody else to give you something as basic as toilet paper and some greens. Yeah. Okay. So, so let me, let me jump in on that. Like uh -huh. that you, what you said is so true and a uh, shout out to Cameron that, that uh, is growing cannabis. So two things happened that I think changed my life, right? One uh -huh. of them is cannabis. I used to be in the public sector. I used to be a commissioner in politics. I used to be a deputy mayor. Um, I used to be a vice president of a bank and all those jobs, uh, particularly the bank, I had to like show up at the office and you mean I had to be there at 830 every morning, right? And the stress that comes with it, the goals, the, the threat of we're going to fire you, downsizing, all that. I live with that and you internalize that. You take that home, right? Uh, I switched and started growing weed and weed pays for my mortgage and then some in a car note, right? And then the vegetables that I grow, uh, I grow for myself. So all that stress of the public sector or the private sector went away, but you got to take that leap. You got to take the leap and take your life into your own hands and say, how am I going? Cause you, cause you got to have the money, right? You got to be able to, but how can I cut my grocery bill in half? That's grow right. A grow a garden. So I still eat, I still, I'm still a carnivore. I still eat, you know, but I don't get my vegetables. When I go, I used to go to, Kroger or Publix or Safeway. I'm all over the country. So whatever grocery store you have, right? Right. And even if you go to the organic section, which I just think that's a big hustle in my opinion, because how do you know what an organic head of broccoli looks like versus a non-organic other than the price and the label they put on it? You really don't know. But I can tell you what I do know. That head of broccoli that looks so fresh in the grocery store has probably been there for two weeks. That's why they make it rain in the vegetable section and try to keep it fresh until you buy it. But it's not really fresh. It's not as fresh as me going out in the backyard and chopping off a head of broccoli or some kale or, you know, cucumber or whatever you like to eat. Just cut your bill because half of your bill at that grocery store is vegetables. It's vegetables. They're marking it up because they know you need that sustainability. You need the vegetables. It's amazing. Even the carnivores. We cook meat, but we use plants <laughs> to season it, right? That's right. So plants are yep. so important for us. And having a plant-based diet, which is kind of what I switch more to, uh, mm -hmm. I try to make 75% of my plate vegetables. That's a great start towards getting healthy if you're transitioning. For those of you who are thinking about transitioning into more of a plant-based diet, do two things. Make 75% of your plate vegetables and start growing your own vegetables. That's right. You watch your grocery bill come down, and you'll watch your uh, your your sustainability, your vibrancy, your health get that much better. Yes, and so it's it's important to understand that you have the power and the control to to do all of this. And and just as before, I'm gonna put um, I'm gonna update the flyer that I had, and I'm gonna li uh, list all of the sources that I'm about to say. Um, for you guys to be able to find some of this information. One of the things that we should all be doing is we need to know the nutrients that we need to consume for whatever we are. A woman in a certain age range, whether you're trying to get pregnant, pregnant, um, just gave birth, nursing, older, whatever. Or if you're a man, whatever age you're in, if you want to increase your fertility, 
Maybe you want to have stronger erections, which is what Robert alluded to by talking about the blue pill. I'm going to just go ahead and say erection. So whatever you need, uh, making sure you keep a healthy prostate. It is our own responsibility to know what we need to be healthy. And then once we figure that out, there is there are herbs and 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 fruits and vegetables that sustain that. And just like Robert said, temperature, water level, moisture, light, heat, nutrients, those are the things that any that any um, uh, live uh, food, fruits or vegetables need. And once you can create that environment, then you can grow it. You know what I'm saying? So if you yeah. haven't already, look up the nutrients that you need. Also, black people, we need to make sure we're looking up stuff for blood pressure because the stress in this world, can yeah. nobody say they got more stress than, than black people, period. Part, yeah. I don't care who you are, you don't have more stress than us, period. So we need to be able to make sure that we specifically watch our salt intake because that leads to increased uh, blood pressure. We especially need to stop eating processed food, box food. And, and just like Robert said, I made a, the conclusion a long time ago, whatever is sold on TV, you shouldn't be getting, you shouldn't be consuming it. It's not nobody out here. I don't see no, you know what I'm saying? Ginger commercials. I don't <laughs> <Right>. see that. <laughs> right. When was the last time you saw a ginger commercial? My, or, my mom or anything gave me ginger. healthy, anything or, or healthy. any, or anything healthy. You don't, you don't, you might see ginger snaps, ginger candies, ginger beer. You might see that, but that's processed with a whole lot of sugar on top. But just straight the root, the straight up root, you pull out the ground. You see what I'm saying? And, so and, get, and under, and know that the, the food you grow at home in the privacy of your own home, whether it be in a, in a place like this or in your backyard, by the way, this takes up about as much space as a full size bed. I'm actually in a spare bedroom that I have out here in California. And this is what I, I use in my studio classes because so many people were saying to me, my clients were saying, well, yeah, you can grow cause you got it in a commercial studio. So I actually proved to them, you can grow in your home. And I just popped it up in my bedroom, right? A, a spare bedroom. But the difference that you will, the difference in taste, right? And the nutrients of a tomato, for example, you grow a tomato plant, you can grow a lot of tomatoes behind me. You can grow a lot of vegetables. But if you were to take a tomato that I grew outdoors or in this controlled environment and you ate, sliced it and you ate it compared to what you're getting at Kroger, I don't know if anybody notices, but the tomatoes taste like cardboard. They have no taste at all. That's right. Apples, the are. apples too. Apples, yeah. Everything, all the stuff that they're commercializing and putting in there and they're, they're, they're messing with the RNA and the DNA of the actual plant. If you actually were to grow it yourself, I mean, the taste is so much different and you'll probably be like, I, that would be the easiest trick for me to switch to a vegetarian or a vegan is just to grow your own vegetables because the taste and the flavor profile is so much easier. The second point I want to make is we have the library of Alexandria in our pockets, right? And I know she likes for me to talk about the library of Alexandria because they think the Egyptians <laughs> built that, but they didn't. That's a whole nother topic. We'll Robert, get... don't be don't be over here talking about, I'm gonna have to get Jabari on here right quick. Don't yeah. even let me send a text message. <laughs> but check this out. What, what I am saying is thanks to Google and modern right. technology, do your research and find what is good for women breastfeeding. That's right. And they'll, they'll tell you and then go buy the seeds and grow it. That's right. And thank you. And check is in the mail, Mr. Gilchrist, because I was just getting ready to talk about seeds. There is a, um, a, a, a site I've been a page I've been following on Instagram for quite a while. Melanated seeds. It's owned by this black woman. Uh, or, or is it melanated organic seeds? It's melanated organic seeds. It's owned by a black woman. There are um, tons of seeds that you can buy. You can buy your seeds there. And, and family, once you get your fruit or your vegetable, then you can repopulate it yourself. There you go. That part. You, can, you, yeah, you don't have to keep buying seeds. Now, I personally would buy some seeds to stock up. OK, but once you once you grow your food, you can regrow from that. I, I do that. I do that from my garlic. If yeah. I save some because I love garlic, I eat it up. But whatever. The point is that, you know, Mother Nature enables you to to continue a cycle because everything is a cycle. Just like was at the start of our conversation, we talked about someone who was passing. 
tr you know, transitioning from, from death into another type of spiritual life as a part of life. Fruits and vegetables enable themselves to be reproduced. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to put that, um, on top of the flyer, like I did before, there's Dr. Layla Africa, Queen of Fua, Dr. Sabi. Now, listen, you need to do your own research. Know what nutrients you need for your body, for your gender, for your age, for what you're doing with your body. Are you an athlete? Are you lifting weights? Are you doing yoga? Are, do you have 14 kids? Like, what do you need to do? Figure out what you need and then find the herbs and the, and the food that supports it. Look, get the seeds that grow it. Hit up Robert so that you can grow something in your own home. Now, listen, if you can't start with a whole room, you can get one of those clay pots. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can get one of those clay pots and you can start growing stuff in your own home. Garlic, onions, and peppers will not attract animals. My outdoor garden, never once have we had garlic, onions, peppers, especially the hot peppers with the little squirrels and chipmunks nibbling. One season, they kept killing my tomatoes. And my mom, who is the most even-tempered, calmest person I've ever met in my life, was tight because those little chipmunks kept getting at our tomatoes. So don't plant tomatoes if you don't know what you're doing. Start with something super simple like peppers. Right, Gar um, uh, uh, Robert? Put them hey, in. Hey, you, know, you know what the easiest fixes for animals? Go to Home Depot. Get mm -hmm. it's really cheap. It's this chicken wire. And just build you a little chicken because the animals can't get inside it. Take the time. If you're going to spend the money to get, you know, living soil and five gallon buckets, which you can, if you, if you use five gallon buckets, poke some holes in the bottom of it so you have drainage, right? But you can move those buckets around, whether you're in an apartment, you can put them on your balcony. If you're at, if you have a backyard, you could put them and you can move them as the sun moves. You can move the plants around. So you don't have to do it like old school, like I did and start digging up the earth you know, behind the garage and turning over the soil, you can put them in five gallon buckets and grow a lot of nice plants and uh, nice vegetables that way. You know what? I'm about to take, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go grab some pots really quickly. I don't know why I didn't think of Yeah, grab more. some pots. I knew it. See, I knew you. Was I'm going <laughs> to grab hold some on. pot too then. That's <laughs> <laughs> Different kind of pot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So while, <laughs> while she's gone, I was going to say that, that, that one of the things that I specialize, just teaching people, because when I got out of politics, you know, and I, I knew I needed money, uh, that's why I turned to cannabis because it was so lucrative and it still mm -hmm. is for those of you who live in lucrative uh, legal states. But um, growing vegetables, if you want to turn that into an industry, for example, I do know of a person in Michigan that I helped uh, get a tomato farm and he mm -hmm. grew exclusive tomatoes and he sold it to uh, restaurants in Little Italy, in Cleveland, and Mexican restaurants. And he supplied them with high fructose corn, uh, uh, not corn syrup, excuse me, but high uh, sugar content uh, tomatoes that they couldn't get in the grocery store, right? We already talked about how they taste like cardboard. So mm -hmm. they could turn that, you can turn this into a market uh, if you wanted to be that entrepreneurial, have that entrepreneurial spirit and turn it into that, that's an option as well. But start with just putting, you know, knowing what you're putting in your body. So I just want to show you this. This plant. Now, these are plants. This, this isn't food. This I got at Target. There's a stack of them. If you're nervous about starting to grow something, my mom and I, when we first started the garden, she was like, if we just put the seed in, something's going to grow up. And then, boom, we just started. And that's how that. Remember, this is natural, you guys. My Western society and modern society has made this complicated. Take a seed. Put it in the soil, cover it up, and it'll grow. Now, there's, you know, you want to make sure you have the nutrients and stuff like that, but don't make it harder than that, right? So get a get one of these little pots. There's this pot, and I have a a, a, a little um, saucer underneath. So when the water drains, it's down there. This and, you can also it. go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh huh. You can. I also have a pot like this. This was a gift, and this is in my house because because the sun. Where, where I have it in my house with the sun, it's, the plants are growing so well. And then this is another one. I got this from, I got this on Amazon for like a stack of them for like, I don't know, 20 bucks. Mm -hmm. You can grow something in this. You can grow tomatoes in this. You can grow garlic in this. And, and, and let me tell you something about garlic and onions. 
garlic and onion is like a one and done. You 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 prepare the soil. You you stick it. You stick this um, the garlic clove down, and then the um, then the garlic bulb grows up. Okay. Right. Well, it, well, it's in the sand, and then you have to you pull them up. And so if you have one clove, a whole bulb comes from one clove, and then so you put it down around. Columbus Day. I, re I always remember it's Columbus Day because I'm always like, oh, Columbus. But that's when you put your garlic down, at least in the Northeast. And then, ooh, and then the garlic, you can uh, harvest it around like May or June. Again, this is in the Northeast. And when you take out your garlic, you put your onions in. And again, you put it in, you wait until, you know, the end, a few more, a few months, and then it comes out. It's easy to it's easy to do root vegetables because you really and truly just put it in and pull it out. Peppers are just as easy. You put in a starter plant, peppers come up like crazy. So get you something simple if you're if you're nervous about starting, but you'll be pleasantly surprised because it's really a part of what we used to do, and you know it's a part of our African spiritual system with hoodoo here and in the um, um, foundational Black American South, Roberts family. From Tennessee and Kentucky, we used to do this. If you look at movies with us from back in the day, like that movie with Denzel Washington when he was a, a bat, he was he didn't go into baseball. He could have, and he was kind of bitter about it. What, what was the name of that movie, y'all? Fences, fences, hidden fences. fences. Yeah, mm -hmm. fences. And and I forget all their names, but um, the but um Vi Viola Davis's character mm -hmm. would tell the little daughter that her husband made with the affair go out to the garden and get some food. And, and the little girl was out in the garden getting the food and it was, it was nothing because that's what we used to do. So please don't be afraid of this. Make sure that you get on top of these things, okay? Yeah, and think about even going back recent, as recent as slavery. A lot of people, they, they threw us the scraps of the pig, and the, you know, but we survived off of plants. Mm -hmm. We we taught we were that was part of our, our makeup. We made plants and that's how we survived. I mean, you can literally survive by just eating plants. I would say that uh, I would get pots bigger than what you had only because tomatoes, the root ball need a lot of room. Uh, but the easier even as equally easy if you're going to Home Depot or any of those places, just pick up a five gallon paint bucket and drill some holes in the bottom, put a layer about two inches thick of stone not the stone you find out in the garden that have been sprayed with pesticide but go actually buy some some pumice stone put a layer for drainage at the bottom of the five gallon bucket and then buy some miracle grow just buy some basic amended soil that's what we call in this industry amended soil it has nutrients already built into it time release mm -hmm. so all you have to do is water it plant the seed and enjoy I mean, as long as you give it sun, proper sunlight, proper, you know, uh, water, which is what the holes are for. Um, what I do is a cheat sheet for a lot of uh, clients that don't really know how to grow and don't want to overwater the plant. You had mentioned a saucer. Get a big saucer that'll fit inside that uh, five gallon bucket and after start watering your plant the first two weeks from the top, pour water over the top. But what that plant is going to do is the root is searching for water. So it's going to search and then you start watering it from the saucer. So you just right. fill the saucer up with water and the root will go search for the water because the bigger the root ball grows down, the bigger the plant grows up. So that's, that's a right. way of not overwatering your plant. Look at all this good free information we getting from these two. Like y'all for real. Y'all need to I'm, get up, I'm get taking up. notes. I told you I was going <laughs> to learn something because I just moved out. I moved to the A, so I got lots of sunlight, lots of backyard, yeah. lots of they, they, the place we moved. I already had some some boxes and things like that Georgia's out of New a great York. Place to grow. And I'm coming from New York, where you know we were figuring it out to where yeah. now I have all of this space. But I'm I'm a newbie to growing. I yeah. was doing the um, I forget what the name of the companies were where they kind of sell the um, the fruits and vegetables that supermarkets and the the Kroger's and things that they reject, but there is nothing wrong with them. These these like organic. And I remember my son oh. was very resistant to eating an apple because he was like, even when it says organic, it don't really. And I was like, well, try this one because this one tastes like when we pick it off a tree. 
Yeah. And this particular one, he was like, oh, I can eat it because he would have like an allergic reaction to the pesticides. Like yeah. he was very sensitive to that stuff. And so um, I would love to be able to do that. For my and, and you don't need pesticides if you're growing at home. I try mm -hmm. to tell people pesticides are used commercially because they're spraying fields and fields and fields. So, you know, they kind of have to control it. Otherwise, pests will just destroy the harvest. But at home. When you only have like two or three tomato plants, just get out there and learn how to, you know, be one with the the nature. That's right. And if yeah. you see a little slug on it, throw it off, get rid of it, right? Yeah. So you can you don't need pesticides if you're only handling a small. That's right. Like, collect rainwater, even though it's sad that in some states it's illegal. Do it anyway. Collect rainwater and water your plants with that. I mean, be resourceful. Mm -hmm. Because that's yeah. a skill set in the near future. Trust me, this this with this food shortage, with the supply chain, with the economy, we're we're in we're pretty much in a recession right now. You're looking at interest rates. So stuff is. I came back from Safeway here in California. I spent a hundred dollars and I had three bags, literally three grocery bags, plastic bags that I could carry with one hand. You know, with a hundred dollars back in the day, I had a whole. I had to go to the car three or four trips, right, to bring. Yeah. So the price. Uh, prices of everything is crazy and the only food that's cheap is guess what not good for you. and who are they marketing that cheap food to uh -uh. us black people we have to be smarter than that and realize that's right. this is the angle that they're playing so let me throw them a curveball because they're not expecting you to grow your own food they're expecting you to be consumers. That's what they're training us to be, consumers. That's why I grow my own weed. That's why I quit more corporate America. And that's why I'm a lot happier because I took my life into my own hands and everybody else can too. Yeah. I, I wanted to add something, you know, as a, a person who facilitates healing, um, that what you're talking about here isn't just the physical process of growing food and eating food, but we're talking about holistic healing here. There's that's an right. opportunity here when you get in yourself, whether it's in the sun or in your home, um, but you got that that fire element is feeding you, that raw is feeding you. Um, we're talking about what you're putting into your body is not just um, giving your body's nutrients, but when those nutrients come in, they start pushing things out that don't belong in your system. That process of detox, that's why we eat um, raw um, when we're in the process of detoxing our system. It's why we take in things like chlorophyll and wheatgrass and flaxseed and all the those really wonderful things that the earth is giving us. So it's not just a, a physical process of healing, just the physical body, but also your emotions. When you start eating clean and you're drinking clean water and you're, you're putting um, plant-based oh, uh, uh, raw foods in your system, you're also balancing your yeah. nervous system. Why is you're, um, yes. you're also um, feeding yourself um, in a way oh that now that work you're doing on your emotions and that work you're doing on your mentals is able to actually, quote unquote, work when people are in therapy for long periods of time, but they're still feeding themselves processed foods and sugars and all of these things. It's actually working against the process of coming to a place of healing. So I just wanted to point that out, that it's Absolutely. a holistic. Um, the impact is holistic of what you're talking about. No doubt. I'm doing here. Yeah. Sorry, we can hear you and see you just in case you were wondering yeah. about your technical difficulty. You're good. So I can you guys hear me, Robert yes. and yes. Tandy Way? You're yes. fine. So yeah, you guys, tonight is like queen of technical difficulties. I'm on my phone and somebody called me and I rejected it. And now I can't hear anyone. I can't hear Robert. Oh, you can't Tandy hear us? Way. We can hear you. So <laughs> just yeah. continue. We can hear you. And I'm gonna try to get back on my computer. You're good. Um, yeah. I'm so sorry. I know I missed okay. something, but you got me. Yeah, you're good. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, so uh the, the the when you mentioned the spiritual spirituality of ourselves, we have to understand that we are spiritual beings. One of the other reasons why I love cannabis is because cannabis is in the psychedelic family. Mm -hmm. It is mm -hmm. one of the psychedelics like uh, uh, psilocybin and other plants and, and things that have been put on this planet for us to use as medicine. Now, have we forgotten the science? Absolutely, mm -hmm. but it's still here, right? So if you wonder why your pineal gland, for example, is not open, mm -hmm. it might be because you keep drinking that whatever that you know from Kroger or you keep eating. And I know the chicken, the fried chicken is awesome. I know. But some of the things that we're feeding our body. So if you and I, I use the analogy of a plant, right? You can take or cannabis, for example, you can take, you can take, take cannabis take. Seed and you can drop it in a miracle grow, and you can put it outside and you can pour some water on it. And you're going to grow cannabis. 
Mm. That will happen. Now, is it going to be that loud ooey that everybody wants? No, right? Because you didn't put the proper nutrients in it. So the same way as our bodies. Our bodies can run off of dollar store. I think somebody mentioned that the processed dollar store food. Our bodies can live off of that. It will function for a while. But if you want your body to run in optimal in optimal conditions and you want it to run the way it was meant to be run from a physical, mental and a spiritual point, mm-hmm. then you're going to have to give it the nutrients required for it to function on that level. Mm-hmm. And that's where growing in the privacy of your own home and knowing what you're putting into your body is so important. Yeah. Absolutely. I don't know if Sai is still back with us. Can you hear us? She's not. I but see her mic is. Can yeah, you guys hear me? Mic is, I can, yeah, hear, can you. hear you. Can you hear us? I yeah, can hear you. Yeah. Yeah. And somebody I said Miracle Grow. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Miracle Grow is not good. I just use that as an example uh, to say that you can grow. Now, there are, I, I make my own living soil. So I use I teach people how to make their own living soil for the plants. But um, I use Miracle Grow just as an example to say that you can grow stuff with Miracle Grow. It is not going to be the best quality, but you can do that. Well, I think we also have to consider, like I consider myself to be a newbie. I've, you know, done the uh, farmers markets and things like that to try to move around um, some of the topics that we're talking about because I am one of those people who is intimidated by yeah. growing my own something. Um, so, you know, when you say something like Miracle Grow, it's like, all right, I've heard of that. Yeah, <laughs> I've seen yeah. that before. So that could be, you know, a toe in the same way. A great, this- great way to start. The spiritual process yeah. is the same way the psychological process. You, you, hey, open the window, crack the door. Sure. You're just getting in the room. And then each time you do it, you you win some. It'll go one way. It'll go another way. You learn a little bit more. You hear some, somebody say something like living soil. Suddenly it's not so intimidating. And you're able to take another step. In opposed right. to throwing it all out because I'm overwhelmed by, oh, I got to make my own soil now. Yeah. So anybody who feels that way, like I'm with you, I understand. Take whatever step. Step. And, Even and, if it's and a an messy example, step and it's imperfect, be imperfect. Let yourself be imperfect. Absolutely. Just take this step into the door. And then all those other things, those next steps will start the same way watching this video for many people watching right. could be their first step. Yep. And then you want to take the next step and then the next step. And then you look up in a year and go, I can't believe I was ever intimidated by um, this process. So, I know that uh, Lisa, you would ask what fertilizer do I use for hydroponics? I use several, but a good a fertilizer that I found that worked well was uh, rock nutrients, and you can get that at at your local grow store. But general grow hydroponics, store. hydroponics uh, is, another uh, is another great basic, basic source. Hydroponics, source. Is, a hydroponics trickier, is a little trickier uh, than soil. Soil is a lot more forgiving, but I have grown hydroponics, aeroponics, you name it. I've grown it. I've taken a seed and filled a five gallon bucket with stone and created my own drip system and grew a plant out of all stone. So yeah, it's just, once you start learning how to grow, it becomes more of an art, Mm. you know, a love and a passion for it than it does, you know, making money. Now, trust me, I make money with weed uh, by teaching (laughs) you how to grow that. You can, it's very lucrative, but just outside of that, even, even the cannabis, I mean, most people, those are, those are misunderstood sciences about these plants, right? There's so many different strains of cannabis that can heal you and use as a medical treatment. So whether it be depression, whether it be, I mean, there are strains of cannabis that actually increase the lung capacity. At least there are studies that are, that are showing that. So it's just doing the research. Like I said, you got the library of Alexandria in your pocket. So <laughs> Robert keeps yeah. saying that on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> So I just want to say um, I'm back and I can hear you guys and I can hear myself and, and, and thank you for your patience as I work through these old technical, technical difficulties. Um, and I knew that my guests, my p- people who are watching would be a good hands with Robert and, and Queen Tandiwe. So, you know, getting to that's something else I was going to mention. So thank you, you guys, for just naturally flowing into the feeling intimidated part. Don't feel intimidated. Just jump in and do it. And just like Tandiwe, Tandi, Queen Tandiwe was saying. We're going to be imperfect. Just yeah. go ahead and do it, you know. And one of the questions Robert had as a kid was, "Why? Why are we using the fish heads and the fish guts?" 
but now he living, knows that's living soil. That's, that's an example of what living soil is. The nutri the nitrogen that comes out of the fish head and the potassium mm -hmm. feeds the plant naturally. So that would be an example of living soil so that it doesn't become complicated in this huge term. Like what the heck is living soil? And now you know what it is. It's just mm -hmm. right. nutrients in the soil that the plant feeds. And yeah. Absolutely. Like my so, I know about that. I'm not gonna. He said, "Shutting up now." <laughs> I love it. Wait, wait. One what of your you guests say? were talking about some of the nutrients, some of the trace nutrients that we use in plants. They're growers. I could tell somebody's growing some cannabis in their life, so they know what they're talking. Yeah, about. he grows. He grows. Um, Haru, Haru Chuti, and Haru we all Jehuti. should grow. That's the whole beautiful part about it. Mm -hmm. I can tell you this, if you're interested in changing your whole lifestyle and getting another source of income, which we desperately need with this economy, mm -hmm. people should consider whether they smoke it or not or consume it or not cannabis. That's a, that is an industry that's coming down the railroad tracks of our lives and there's nothing we can do about it. Now, society and the powers that be, our government in particular, wants us to be consumers, not manufacturers. Right. Us to be manufacturers. Our black people can't be manufacturers of anything. Of anything. Consumers. They'll give you money to buy a car, a house, anything that's going to put you in the debt. Go to right. that bank and ask for a business loan and watch what they do to you. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Robert, do you see that um, Haru Tahuti is in Oakland? Are you still in Oakland? I'm in Oakland now. I'm back and forth. I'm in Oakland um, and I'm also in Detroit. And I, uh, um, I'm about to start coming back. I'm about to start moving to Atlanta too. So I'm going to have a third stop in Atlanta and just kind of fly, be the, the fly jock of cannabis. <laughs> ah, you but yeah, if you're in Oakland, make sure you come to Carnival. A little shout out for Carnival. It's uh, uh, Carnival is June 4th at Mosswood Park. So I hope to see everybody there. Bam. <laughs> you want to learn about samba, you want to learn how to dance and samba and Brazilian dance and know and know about our culture, know about Brazil and know where 75 percent of our ancestors came from during the slave trade. They're over there in Brazil. So we need to know that. Is T-Dub going to be doing that? Is he going to be there? He, he's over it. I'm business manager <laughs> over it and he's King Theo. Yeah, absolutely. I love T-Dub. Tell him yeah. I said what's up. I will. Yes. Yes. So, you know, family, listen. The point of tonight was don't panic. We got this. Everything that you need, not only you already have it, but our ancestors did it. And not even our ancestors, our relatives, our great, great grandparents, grandparents, they did it. it the, the disruption and the lack of knowledge is not because we can't know it or we don't uh, never knew it or it's not a part of our culture on the absolute contrary. OK, we were the original people, first and foremost, hard stop, mm -hmm. but the original people who were able to have an agricultural agrarian society. OK, so so it's it's it, it is literally in our DNA moving uh, closer to the present. It's in our family, you know, and even when we would go to the grocery store, all of us on here are old enough to know sometimes you'd bring vegetables home and the, the soil the dirt from the soil on the vegetable was still on it. Yeah. The carrots still had the dirt on the bottoms of it. You had yeah. to clean your vegetables. I, I distinctly remember doing that with my great grandmother in Virginia, cleaning vegetables because you could see the dirt from the soil when they pulled it up and put it and gave it to you. That's how fresh it was. It wasn't yeah. cut up in a bag and this and the third washed and clean and chopped all that nonsense. We need to get back to rubbing the dirt off of our vegetables. And this is something I wanted to say right when I lost my um, volume. I don't wear the gloves. I put my, and I don't wear my rings either. I, I leave these dirty. at the crib. I put my hands deep in that soil. My fingernails are dirty. I look like a little five-year-old outside playing. You know, when you had the ponytails with the little fuzz balls at the end of the day, cause you out there enjoying nature. That is when you're really, just like Robert was saying, one with nature and with the earth and with your food and and the, t the tomatoes are sweeter it tastes like real food some of us haven't tasted real food in so long just like some black women unfortunately don't know what their hair looks like because it's been relaxed in six mm. some of us don't know what a real tomato tastes like or what carrots taste like and, or and what if you, meats taste like and if you start growing even on a small scale 
you'll never stop. You'll never you taste, stop. If you taste a tomato that you've grown or a green pepper that you've grown or a jalapeno or any kind of vegetable, root vegetable or fruit vegetable, you'll never you'll you'll never go back to the only time you'll go to the Kroger or Publix or Safeway is because you're out. It be, it's be, it, it, period. You it's to. because you're out. And yeah. it's 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 a it's a it's so simple. The entry point is so easy. When I showed you those little pots, if you took one garlic clove and put it in the pot and left it alone, you're going to get some garlic. You're going to get one bulb next next season. You're going to be like, it was that easy. I could have done a whole plot full of full of garlic. And I could have done garlic a whole plot full of your blood pressure. That's right. Yeah. Be like, oh, wow, I'm glad I did this. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, family, listen, what is your homework? Here's your homework. I said at the beginning of the season of Tuesday Talk, we're going to leave you with tangible information to help you be uh, more rooted into your African spirituality, your comedic spirituality, and Pan-Africanism. And taking control of your health, taking control of your dollar, and taking control of, of you knowing that you can trust your own choices and decisions is one of the most revolutionary things that we can do. Uh -huh. If you're a man of a certain age, certain activity, and your prostate health, and as a black man, your blood pressure, go learn about what you need. What do you need? If you're a woman, you want to get pregnant, are pregnant, just had a baby, nursing, menopause, whatever, wherever you are, go learn about the nutrients and nutrition that you need. That's the first thing. The second thing is what herbs and plants and vegetables and fruit support that? What supports that? What root vegetables support that? Make a little tea chart, okay, that supports that. The third thing is make sure you're using reputable sources. I'm not saying don't use medical doctors. We've all used medical doctors. What I am saying is th that is not the only source of information. You have to scrutinize everything. There are naturopathic doctors. You have holistic practitioners. There are herbalists. You have hoodoo women who are who are in hoodoo who understand herbs, etc. Do the broad. There's Ayurvedic medicine, Chinese medicine. Do the broad spectrum of 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 health and healing, not band aids and yeah. and and drugs, but health and healing. Okay. And once you do that, you are able to take control of everything you do. So if everybody else has a shortage of baby formula, you're not worried because you know what to feed your child. Partly because you grow it. Right. Partly because it's right behind you, like it's right behind Robert. Like it's right in my garden out there. Okay? Like it's the, the farmer's market, the, the, the DeKalb farmer's market is, is a pretty dope spot. So you should go there one day. I don't know if you've been there already, but they do have some good stuff out there. But like you like you just figured out, Georgia is a great place to grow. So so family, mm -hmm. who, who what do you need? What supports it? Who are your sources? Dr. Layla Africa. Uh, Mawada Ashby has some books out on nutrition. Queen of Fua, mm -hmm. Doctor Doctor Sebi, yeah, and there are and there are also other people. Bana Set, I had her on t on Tuesday Talk at at the um at the front end of um, Tuesday Talk. She actually came on after Tandiwe. She has information. Um, Tandiwe has ho holistic healing for Black women. So mm -hmm. these are really good sources. And you know what? Don't believe me. Don't believe them. Do your own research and 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 learn it yourself. So you can empower, because again, you don't want to be dependent on anybody, right? Not even them. Now, also, who do you know that knows how to grow more inside your house than, than Robert Gilchrist? If you know someone who knows more, let me know. And I'm going to tell you, he don't know more than Robert. Get on his website. It's Let's Grow Inside and learn how to grow inside. We've got melanated seeds, support this black woman and her and her organic seeds. And the last thing I wanted to mention, I kind of wanted to put this into the conversation, but we're, we're on our way, um, I'm winding down. There are self-sustaining black farms, black owned farms, right. okay? And, and those at, you can go visit those farms, um, talk to the farmers, support those farmers, Maybe they grow their food, freeze it and sell it and send it. I don't know. I'm just, you know, spitballing here. But we, we have enough resources to do this in where we enclose our dollar and we keep it black. All right. So from start to finish, it's black from seed to, to, to the plate into the belly. It's something that you control 
that you understand that you produce on your end and you support other black people. Family, that's the assignment. Tandiwe and Robert, I am, thank you so much for you guys coming on. It's, it's always fun. I have to, I, I gotta also tell on myself, it's fun when you guys are here because I know you personally and, and I know what y'all gonna give. I know what you're gonna give to people. And, um, and it's always good information. It's always a good conversation. So thank and you so I, much I, for I was, jumping on. I was hoping I was in my best behavior because I haven't smoked last time. I normally smoke weed. So I'm constantly smoking some weed. So it's a whole different conversation, but I didn't do that this time. You did it last right. time? Oh yeah, every time we talk, I'm probably, I'm medicated. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the medicine is what it is. It, you know what? Because, because when I was in politics, you couldn't do weed. You couldn't do that. So a lot of it is alcohol, right? And that's the that's the worst. That's bad. That's Super sugar, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's poison. But you know, that's legal, right? So we're allowed to consume that. But other drugs that happen to be healthy for us or other medicines that are healthy, it's uh, amazing. Right. Not legal. Hmm. But you can get all the opioids you want. You can go get some oxycotton. All you gotta do is twist your ankle and go to the hospital and you get loaded up. I sprained my back or hurt my back, I don't know, a year or two ago, like before COVID, whatever. And I was scared because I was like, what in the hell is this? Because I never hurt myself like that and never whatever. I get into the ambulance and the paramedic offers me some, some drugs. And I said, so basically my options are ice or, or crack. And he was yeah. like, yeah, well, oh, well, he was like, yeah, heroin. Yeah, I said, ice or heroin? And he was like, pretty much. And I was like, I have the ice. It was, yeah. it was, it was that easy for, for, this, for this man to just give me this, to give me heroin. And I had to be like, no, nah, partner, I'm good. I'll take the ice. I was in so much pain. But you know what? What I don't want is heroin. Yeah. No. And so, you know, so, it, you know, if it's readily available, it's, it's, it's not, it's not anything you want. Just like Tupac said, I don't want it if it's that easy. Right. Right. You know, so uh -huh. I want to see if there are any questions in, um, I think you guys answered a lot of the questions, Robert, you were, you were reading it and answering some of the questions. I was checking a little bit of it out. I didn't really dive oh. into it, but. Here's one that Sunette Cheryl said, find out what you're lacking through your blood work, your blood work to help right. see what's lacking and then add the food to your diet to combat what's that what's lacking. That's a really good idea. So besides the general searches on, you know, your classification, doing a, a, a blood workup will let you know what you need. And that's really a good baseline place to start. And then you can progress from there to build up your profile for what you need. And, and another suggestion I would make, I keep mentioning like beet root powder or beets for black men with prostate issues, uh, which causes so many other disability and diseases, right? That's where the high right. blood pressure starts kicking in. And that's where you have prostate issues. That's where you have all kinds of infertility. But a lot of that's connected, right? One of the things I recommend is, for example, like I said, beets. Try eating beets every day for a week and, and then take notes and write down how it affects your body. How do you feel? Right. Little things that you can change that will change your life. Like when you first rise, knock down 32 ounces of water, get, get everything oh, yeah. in you and get that going. You, we should be drinking at least a gallon of water a day. Um, I keep I keep a gallon. And I put it in the freezer and I, I like cold water. I don't like room temperature water, but what, however you get it down. And I just make sure that I drink this before the day's over. So I get my gallon in, but you got to keep your body hydrated. You got to have the right nutrients. But I think a good suggestion would try it, try it one at a time and see how it affects you. That's a really good suggestion. And I'm glad you mentioned that. I don't think I was going to make that suggestion, especially writing it down because you get to, to log what's happening and you can literally see, I started here and, and, I, and I felt this way and now I'm over here and I feel that way. It's a, it's a tangible record of the improvement of your health. And one at a time is a, is a really good way to really learn that particular, uh, let's right. say, um, vegetable. So let's say you do what Robert suggested. You, you start from, from scratch, you're eating McDonald's, eating ding dongs and stuff like that. And then, you have, and then you have beets for a week. How do you feel 
after yeah. you've had beets for a week and you're eating all this processed crap. Let me tell you something. It's going to be repulsive to you after a while and not a long while. And you're not nope. going to want to eat it. So re re adding adding a, a natural, organically grown uh, vegetable one at a time, you you're going to feel the difference. And I do want to say this one last thing. I'm going to keep it real with you, family. You might get bubble guts. You know why? Mm -hmm. Because it's unearthing some of that impacted fecal matter. Mm -hmm. And it's pushing it out. It's, it's also not even getting to the fecal matter. You might be constipated. You might have some, some, some fresh feces in there that, that's been in there, or recent, I should say, that can't move because it's pulled out all the, 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 the hydration and, it's, and you're constipated. And then when you add healthy food to your body, your that that food is healthy and it's designed to push stuff through your colon, your ascending colon, transcending colon, descending colon, mm -hmm. on out your body. So the bubble guts isn't because the food is bad for you. On the contrary, my dear, it's like that because it is good for you and it's moving everything through your system. If you really want, really want to start from 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 the basics, get that blood work up, and then do it. Then do a um, a colon cleanse. Yeah. And you take certain herbs, and you're drinking water and certain teas. Stay in the house. Yeah. Buy <laughs> a bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> Stay in the house. Buy the bathroom. Have your bubble guts. Clean out your colon. Start from that. And let me tell you something. Just like Robert said, a week will make a noticeable tangible difference in your life you will physically and literally be able to feel the difference when i update the flyer i'm going to give my suggestions on what you should do to clean your colon and one of those suggestions is going to be stay in the house and stay by the bathroom and if you don't miss if you leave out those two um suggestions that's going to be on you literally and figuratively okay so and, and you know and something that i think is an easy experiment for for listeners is let's say what's today uh See, when you 17. work for yourself, you don't even worry about what day it is anymore. <laughs> That's so, not true. Starting today, you know, for the for the next four days of this week or for the next seven days, from Tuesday to Tuesday, start tomorrow, Wednesday to Wednesday, eat nothing but vegetables, stir fry and rice, brown rice, and just try different vegetables, stir fry yep. some mushrooms, some cauliflower, some whatever you feel like. And I guarantee you, if you do that for seven days, your body's gonna feel so much better. Your bowel movements are regulated. Yep. Yep. You are not sitting on the toilet forever. You just, you know, and it just goes through your body. You should be having as many bowel movements as you have meals. Neat. That's proper. right. That's so, right. But the biggest thing is knowing what you're putting in your body. Put quality gas in your car and it's gonna run better. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's that that's a good note on, that we're gonna leave it on. We put good gas in our car, but not good food in our body. We're going to fuel our bodies with, with good, natural, real food that we grow Living ourselves. Food. Right. Living Live food. foods. Yep. Electric foods. Yes. So thank you, Queen Tanziwe and Robert, for joining us to, uh, tonight. I really appreciate it. And um, hopefully this gives you some tools that you can use during this Food shortage. That's why I use quotes because it's not a food shortage when you've got seeds and you have knowledge and you can do it yourself. Mm -hmm. So I just want to let you know that we are winding down with the amount of Tuesday talks that we have for uh, this season. Our last mm -hmm. Tuesday talk is going to be on June the 7th. June the hey, can 7th. I make is a, can I make a comment about your Tuesday talks? I love your sure. show. I oh, love you. So you. I, I've spoke, I, I speak, I'm in the speaking, you know, circuit a lot talking about cannabis and talking about my business, but I like your, your show because your listeners are in, involved, right? They ask questions. They're here because they really want to know something and that's refreshing. So keep up the good work. You're doing a great oh, job. Thank you, Robert. I really yeah. appreciate that. Thank you. Thank no you. I have, to yes. ensure, I have to ensure that that checks in the mail. But no problem. <laughs> <laughs> These alphas. Anyway, <laughs> no, I'm playing. I'm just joking. Um, Robert is an alpha. I was an alpha queen with, with his chapter, Alpha Phi Chapter. She That's is. That was. Show. Let's stop using this past tense stuff. She still is. There you go. Where's my hand? Right. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I do want to say that we have, um, we have three more Tuesday talks. You all know how to reach out to me. 
You can DM me um, at, through the Shrine of My Arts um, uh, Facebook Messenger for suggestions. I get suggestions. I do my best to try to get those people who are suggested. And just because we have three more doesn't mean that I'm not going to be talking to people over the summertime. That's exactly what I'm going to be doing over the summertime to line everybody up for next year. So if there's a topic or a person that you want on Tuesday Talk, please DM me. If you know me personally and you tell me, that's great, but I'm going to forget. So please DM me because then I'll know where to find it and it's more systematic for me and I'll, I'll act, it, it'll be actionable if you do that. Okay, so I want to thank everybody for, for joining us tonight. I hope that you have learned something. The conversation was lively and informative. And remember, we have, I'm going to put in uh, Tandiway's group. It is for Black women only. MelanatedDivinity.com. You can just go straight to MelanatedDivinity.com. It'll shoot you straight to uh, the Facebook group where we do all things holistic healing. Awesome. Awesome. And uh, let's grow inside. Those links will be there, resources, et cetera. So thank you so much, family. And we will see you soon. Shemimaat.